Hello guys, good day. This is Anne of Reinforce Week Love, your fellow positive reinforcer. Today we are going to talk about the cost of anger. How unmanaged anger can sabotage your life. Now this is for the people who have, you know, still on the process of uh, working on themselves in order to manage their anger themselves. You know, they do anger management themselves like me. You know, I, to be honest, I am still working on myself. I am still an unfinished business. business. And I do believe that all throughout my life, as long as I'm, a, I'm, I'm alive, I wouldn't be finished. Schooling life is forever. And part of, you know, my subject is anger management. It's not really that too bad, you know, for in my part, but you know, when when I feel this type of emotion, every time I get to know myself. You know, out of all the, the things that I'm I've gone through from the past, when you know, when shit happens, the more I get to know myself. And it's quite interesting though. That is why I am proud to share this to you that I'm still in the process I'm still an unfinished business you know in terms of managing myself as well as most importantly schooling life this will be forever and I love it there's there's a lot of things I can learn from myself from these emotions now Having an unmanaged anger can have significant emotional, physical, social, and psychological consequences. Now, here's a breakdown of how it affects a person and some effective strategies to manage it. Because, you know, I do believe that everybody gets angry, and I'm one of them. So, yeah, since the more I get to know myself, the more... I've learned and I can share my experience to you through this channel. Now, the number one consequence of unmanaged anger, rrr, the rage, is physical issues. You know the way when your stress hormones goes up, triggered by anger, stress hormones like adrenaline and cortisol can raise your blood pressure and increase your heart rate leading to you know in the long run hypertension cardiovascular disease and even increased risk of heart attack and when you're angry you know you're thinking a lot you are sometimes you are unable to sleep it even weakens your immune system you know making you more susceptible to illness and again when you're angry you know, to some people, it didn't happen to me yet. So far, so good. So far, still under control. To some people, when they get angry, they feel this headache, migraines, and body aches over time. And when these symptoms and, you know, when a person is left with an unmanaged anger in the long run, you know, th this is uh, one way of how this emotion can really ruin uh, the life of a, a person. So, yeah, in the long run, body-wise, having these physical symptoms leave you no good. So, physical health issues is number one obvious warning sign. Now, the second thing that you have to take note when you unmanage your emotion you know, this negative emotion, strong negative emotion, anger. The second thing that we got, you got to deal with is mental health consequences like anxiety and depression. Continuous anger can lead to emotional burnout, anxiety and depression, which tends to fuel negative thought patterns leading you to, you know, you know to the point that you can't hardly sleep. And increase your appetite, leading to uh, like in weight gain, and then thinking about like you're all over the place if you cannot settle this anger emotion. And when you're angry, you have 
a greater possibility of impaired judgment. Anger can cloud your ability to think clearly, leading to poor decisions and impulsive behaviors that you may regret later. And having this unmanaged emotion, having unmanaged anger, often feel, you know, often leave you feel guilty or ashamed afterwards, leading to self-doubt and low self-worth in the long run. Look, I've, I've felt this too. There are times in my life wherein when I get angry, I feel, I felt impulsive. And, you know, I'm also glad that I was able to get to know this, get to know myself because of the people who care about me. You know, they, don't, they know already what's happening and they don't fight back. They leave me for a while until my anger subsides and then they tell me all about it. And thank God I have these people in my life that, you know, because of them, I get to know myself more. And to be honest, this is quite true. There are times when I feel so impulsive that I'm, I, I left myself I know, feel ashamed after what I did. It happened to me in the past several times and uh, quite a few times recently. But since, you know, I happen to know this, that it, you know, in, in some, in some possibilities that might, this might going to pop up, at least I know what the heck is happening to me. What are the possibilities that, you know, I could, I could do if I leave this alone or if, you know, if, if I try to manage myself the next time around. That is why I am still a work in progress. Now, the third thing. This is a terrible consequence of anger. Relationship damage. You know, when you're angry, you know, frequent outbursts of passive aggressive behavior can, can harm your personal and professional relationships. People might avoid an angry person leading to social isolation, even in uh, at home or romantic relationships. This can strain a, a relationship when you, when you don't manage your ang anger. And by the time that you feel like, look, it's, it's, you have it, you know, you have an outburst of energy, you have to, it's important to really make it up, to, to face it, like to communicate it. And if the other party, it could be your colleague or your spouse or your significant other would tell you that, look, this is wrong. You have to manage your anger in some point. It, it's not going to be good for you in the long run. It's way better to really take it into con consideration. Otherwise, your relationships, even your you know, your job could be at stake too. And when you're angry, you know, anger prevents healthy communications because when you're angry, you become impulsive. You're, instead of saying, you know, bringing up the issue, you tend to be, you know, insulting the person at times because you become impulsive. Anger clouds your judgment. So, Communication breakdown, when you're angry, you know, there's a possibility that you might be, you, people might be shouting at each other, saying harsh words, or people might avoid each other, making it difficult to resolve the conflict. You know, instead of raising the issue and communicate respectfully as nice as they can, they tend to avoid each other and no more. It's a relationship breakdown. And anger also leads to harmful actions. It can dam damage trust, making it hard for others to feel safe and secure around you when you're angry. Like outbursts of angry. Like throwing stuff around. Saying harsh words to people. Disrespecting people. Insulting them when they're angry. You know, imagine how would your, you know, your company feel about it. Your friend, your spouse, your girlfriend, your boyfriend when you when you're acting out like that how would it make them feel it would make them feel unsafe being around you what if what if what if it's just you and these people you know you're at home it's not healthy 
listen to them, listen to yourself. And when you're angry, you know, you have problems with uh, managing your that, that kind of emotion. It can also lead to uh, workplace, workplace conflicts. You know, it can compromise your career, even financial problems. You know, the way uncontrolled anger can lead to conflict with colleagues or superiors, leaving, leading to job dissatisfaction, even termination, you know, at the worst scenario. And when you're angry, like outburst all over the place, impulsive, another worst case scenario, you're going to face legal issues. Violence and aggression, property damage or reckless action, legal issues. It's a pain in the ass. It's preventable. So when, when, when those people who care about you tells you about your anger issues, please listen to them. And uh, do something about it. And since these people, it could be your family, your best friend, know about this, they will understand, especially when you're working on yourself. They would even encourage you, support you, you know, reinforce you, you know, reinforce your actions, like the Reinforce Me Club. <laughs> now, I am going to give you nine ways today on how to manage your anger effectively. Now, the very basic one, the first one, and one, uh, yeah, the most important one, self-awareness, and uh, you know, part of this, far, part of this is to to be aware about your triggers. Triggers. Speaking about triggers, early signs when you get triggers, you know, when when something, when somebody said something, and you know, it turns you off, it made you get off your nerve. Triggers. Those are triggers. And the early signs. Recognize the early signs when you get triggered. Racing heart, clenching fists, tension. You know, when I feel, I, I don't clench fists, I don't raise my heart, but I do feel the tension. Like, I'm not comfortable. I want to, I'm not comfortable with this energy. I want to put it out. So that is my, my, my sign that I, I get angry. Understanding what triggers your anger. It could be yeah, something that's been said that you're against. It could be you, you feel like you're, you've been disrespected. It could be frustration or feeling out of control that, you know, the things that you planned out didn't happen. And you feel like, oh gosh, Jesus Christ, it's the end of your career. But it's not. Look, it's not. It's not going to be the end. You know, being aware about this situation, especially the signs, can help you manage it before your angry feeling escalates. So self-awareness is everything. When you feel triggered and you feel the tension, you know, just like I, I feel the tension. I'm not comfortable with my energy, with my body anymore. It feels like I want to start a fight and I have to go to a certain space that where, where I can be alone and I talk to myself. I do that. It's, I'm not sure if I'm ashamed about it, but I think I'm proud. And uh, I do believe that self-awareness is everything. And doing something about it is, will make it, will make your life better. Will make this world a better place. And you can even uh, keep an angry, anger journal. But as to me, I just have my normal journal every day. And just write out the, you know, the, the moments when I got triggered. And I know now much better than before. You know, my, you know the, the signs, the cues that I get angry. And I know now much better than before that I must manage it. I must ma manage my anger better than before. Yeah, I keep saying it. Yeah, yes, indeed. I must manage this negative emotion at the best of my ability. So yeah, for you can you yeah you could also consider uh, keeping a an anger journal, documenting situations where you felt angry and how you how you responded. You know to help you identify patterns and work on more effective reactions. The second thing that you can do is cognitive behavioral technique, which means 
reframing your negative thoughts. So when angry, we often think of it in extremes. Challenging negative or irrational thoughts, like everything will go wrong, ah, can diffuse some of emotional charge. So instead of thinking this is unfair, you don't care about me, you know, you don't care about my feelings, you don't care about my future, I feel unsafe, those negative thoughts, you can remind yourself, I can handle this calmly. Or it's, it's not the end of the world. Or for myself, let me tell you, I tell myself, I am better than my anger. I am better than my anger. I can handle this. I can handle this better. I am better than my anger. After I leave the situation and get some space as much as possible for myself, just two to five minutes, I tell myself, I am better than this. I'm better than this. I'm better than my anger. I can handle this. So that's what I'm telling to myself this time. Or you can also do this. You can delay response. Give, give yourself time to calm down before responding. So when somebody triggered you, like you feel like you've been disrespected, you just don't respond. Don't fight back. Count, count one to ten before you respond. Take a deep breath or walk away to call off. And then, you know, by the time you, that you're ready to respond, make sure that you've already calmed down. So as to me, I, I get some space. I walk away to cool, cool down. Because, you know, as soon as I can, I try to cool down and say to myself, I can handle this. I am better than my anger. I'm better than my anger. Number three. You can also, you would, yeah, you can also consider relaxation techniques. You know, when somebody trigger, triggers you, you can uh, do deep breathing. Slow, deep breaths activate the parasympathetic nerve system. Parasymp should I say, yeah, parasympathetic nervous system, which help calm the body. Inhale deeply through your nose and hold it and exhale slowly. So progressive muscle relaxation like this, the deep breathing, uh, can, can help release the tension in your muscle when you're angry. You could also do visualization technique as part of uh, relaxation technique that you can also visualize, you know, when you, feel, when you feel like you've already cooled down, you can imagine a peaceful place or situation or your mom and dad or your girlfriend, your boyfriend, that you're happy together to help you calm down, to help release the tension when you're angry. Using this imagery can help soothe the mind and the body. Now, another best thing to solve your anger issue is, drum rolls, problem solving. So instead of nagging, instead of crying, instead of complaining, focus on solution. Solve the problem as soon as possible to get rid of that tension, your anger. Use that energy to solve the problem that you're facing, the problem that caused you to be angry. Instead of ruminating on what's wrong, shift your attention to how you can address the problem. Use that tension to solve the problem. While, you know, if it's kind of a, a project problem or when you you know you can so you can you can use that energy by addressing the problem when you feel like you've already calmed down but still solve the problem itself don't go home as much as po possible without solving the problem otherwise you're still going to think about it at home another thing so this is part of problem solving this is what we call compromise so there are some things that we can change that is completely out of control that sometimes we have, we just have to compromise. Meeting halfway or accepting that some things are beyond our control can help reduce anger. And when you, when you finally decide to compromise, that's the time that you finally adapt on the situation. 
hopefully it's it's a healthy healthy compromise healthy adaption of the situation healthy in a way that it's it's good for you it's good for your family it's good for your future now number five another important thing to to resolve your anger feeling effective communication express your feelings calmly and directly without becoming aggressive so you can use the statement i feel upset when you leave the door open or i feel upset when you le- you when you leave when you leave the house without telling me <laughs> i love you or whatever silly stuff just communicate your feelings so that the other party the other person can able to recognize it and find solution for it you can both you know you're going to have your needs met so communicate it with all the respect as nice as you can to avoid blaming the other person and you know when you communicate your needs you know those so that you can avoid uh, the the feeling the anger feeling the next time around when when you talk with with the other person or other party please listen actively so that you you can able to resolve you can able to solve the problem and you know take away the muscle tension take away the the pro- no more no need for no need to be angry when you finally solve the problem listening carefully to other person's perspectives can prevent misunderstanding and reduce conflict number 6 you can you might want to consider physical activity when you're angry this is really good you know at work when you feel stressed out by your colleague at work or any issues that you know at work that which is out of your control you can use exercise to channel that negative emotion physical activity is an excellent way to release to release pent up energy and reduce stress it helps you lower your cortisol levels and boost mood enhancing endorphins or you can even uh you know just take a walk or engage in sports this will you know this this could also this could also help a lot you know a quick walk outside or engaging in a sport you enjoy can help you divert the attention and forget about the feeling that emotion because emotion will just pass pass by and when you're angry you you talk shit you 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 say you speak up harsh word you you will you might gonna even regret those impulsive behaviors that you did but when you you're engage in sports you that emotion will just pass pass by and just and eventually you can deal with that issue with that problem afterwards and to some people though they do consider seeking support which is number 7 they can you know they talk to someone or uh, they they will undergo therapy in order to manage anger you know seeking professional help number 8 you can use humor when you're angry well you just have to be extra careful with this because you know it will going to turn out to be sarcastic kind of humor but you can use humor to roast the person not to insult the person humor can help diffuse tense situations and allow you to take a step back from your anger avoid sarcasm which can make things worse just humor to roast the person no insults no sarcasm deep sarcasm that's going to start a fight lastly you might want to consider mindfulness and meditation you know practicing mindfulness helps you stay in present moment like meditation or walking around in, in nature uh venturing trails you know which can help you enjoy the moment not thinking about those the issue that you're you've gone through and it it will just going to make you angry anyway so just enjoy the moment meditation can also help you reduce the the energy the anger energy by promoting inner calmness and emotional balance you know thinking you know bringing your thoughts in the now and finding solution for it meditation 
you become stoic which is which is better better than you know having an anger outburst you know for leading leaving you w- to to shame and embarrassment even regret all in all you know when you leave your anger and manage it can negatively impact nearly every area of your life physical relationships career and even your mental well-being learning to manage your anger through self-awareness relaxation techniques effective communication and professional support when necessary is crucial for emotional balance and long-term happiness and most importantly when you feel like it's you know you really need to do something about it then do something about it listen ca- carefully to those people who care about you and there's nothing wrong about managing your anger matter of fact is you know the consequence to it is just it will only make you feel happy relax and good in problem solving skills so i hope you learned something from our topic today uh, if you ever love this episode you can follow me in youtube facebook spotify apple podcast even in amazon podcast this is an of reinforce me club your fellow positive reinforcer i do appreciate your time and have a lovely day ahead thank you for your time